Chapter 21 Lu Xu hid within the crowd and secretly observed the female student who was emitting waves. She looked calm while she watched the whole commotion. Lu Xu thought that this female student was way smarter than the male student who threw the rostrum down. Being calm under such uncertain circumstances was a much more intelligent choice. Doing so would give one more flexibility to think before reacting to whatever was going to happen next, unlike throwing the rostrum and leaving your fate to others. He could detect the waves coming from her but he could not tell what class of metahuman she was besides that she was at least a class, e metahuman. At that point in time, Lu Xu was still a pitiful class F, he wanted to quickly earn more distress points but before that, using refresher fruits would strengthen his body and increase his potential. After some observations, Lu Xu was certain that the female student had not realized the abnormalities about him and he finally calmed down. It seemed like others really could not detect his powers. Paying no mind to the female student, he started wriggling his way through the crowd to the front and eventually managed to reach the door of sophomore class 7. The bespectacled male student had already settled down and Shi Qingyan was helping out the form teacher of class 7 whose face was swollen from the beating. The male student was still edgy and Lu Xu felt that without the help of another metahuman, it was impossible to stop him. Being a metahuman himself, he could tell how obtaining such powers could easily make a teenager feel mistakenly invincible. Being a metahuman amongst a group of normal people was like being a tiger within a herd of sheep. Whether the tiger would eat the sheep was one thing, but there was already an undeniable difference in strength and advantage. During puberty, some of the teenage non-metahumans were already bragging about beating up teachers and joining gangs. Imagine what would happen after awakening. Lu Xu had no idea what kind of person the male student was but anyway, he had suddenly snapped. Lu Xu had just wanted to take a look and did not plan to interfere or do anything unusual. The male student exclaimed, you can try calling my parents if you can even find them. Did his parents leave him? Lu Xu's own class representative responded objectively, security will be here soon. You will face the law for your actions and there is no need for us to call your parents, we will just hand you to the police. The male student laughed, I'm only 17 and underage. So what if I had hit him, I don't even want to come to this school anymore. Hearing his smug and uncouth words, Lu Xu suddenly realized that this was a golden opportunity to earn some distress points, that. The moment Lu Xu opened his mouth, all bystanders turned their attention to him and there was a momentary silence. He continued, The criminal law states that committing any of the eight big crimes after the age of 14 will require you to face full consequences, but under the civil law, the minimum age is 16, in order to sound more convincing. Lu Xu even listed out the eight big crimes, the eight big crimes include murder, assault, rape, robbery, arson, drug dealing, spreading dangerous substances, and bombing. What you've just committed was assault. From Li Qi's distress, plus 481. This male student, whose name was Li Qi, started acting panicky. Wow, so much. Lu Xu immediately backed off and started making his way back to his class through the crowd. The guy had suddenly generated so much distress points, what if he charged at him? The students watching the commotion were stunned. Why did this person come all the way here just to say this? And after he finished his sentence, he immediately turned around and left? Actually, Lu Xu could also throw a rostrum single-handedly with some effort. A rostrum weighed only about a few tens of kilograms and so Lu Xu was not that afraid of Li Qi. But the problem was that if a fight started there and then, the black coats would be in for a pleasant surprise when they arrived to be able to catch two of them in one go. After Lu Xu had left, the commotion died down and everyone stood there speechless. Shi Qingyan had said those words just to scare him a little and this kind of issue would normally be settled within the school itself. On the other hand, Li Qi had originally thought that he would not face lawful consequences for his actions, but now that Lu Xu had appeared and preached all that, he could not help but feel paranoid and troubled. What to do? In everyone's mind were these three words, what? To. Do. On the way back to class, a new update came in, 
From Shi Qingyan's distress, plus 179. From Li Qi's distress, plus 212. From Lu Dian's distress, plus 111. This was the class 7's representative. From Not only the three of them were affected, even the onlookers were confused. They had wanted to watch the commotion when Lu Xu suddenly turned up and spoiled the fun. Now that the fight seemed to have stopped, it was time to continue with the exam. Lu Xu's initial intentions were to earn some distress points from that male student. He was the kind of person who would even earn distress points off those people on the message in a bottle, so he would not let this opportunity by. No matter who, distress points were the most important. And so his actions paid off. Looting a total of 2,700 distress points, Lu Xu's eyes lit up. As expected, since school had started, his income had increased exponentially. How generous of the teachers and students. With so many points, Lu Xu believed that he could win anything and everything from the lottery and the refresher fruit was something he definitely needed. On the way back, Lu Xu coincidentally met eye to eye with the female student metahuman. Both of them did not react out of the usual and just continued with their things. At this time, the staff, teachers, and the vice principal had all arrived, but were all too afraid to go near the commotion about a metahuman. Violence against teachers had happened before, but Awakening, no one had dealt with this. A few days ago, Awakening was still a rumor, but today, it was something happening in front of their own eyes. In fact, Lu Xu was quite impressed with Shi Qingyan who reacted immediately to this situation and even acted so bravely, in front of the male student metahuman. Back in the corridor outside his class, Lu Xu saw that the students were all actively discussing awakening. Since it had happened right under their noses, perhaps anyone and everyone could become metahumans. This bunch of students was not just discussing what had just happened, but they were talking about what they would do after they awakened. They were planning to create a World Peace Protection Team. Chapter 22 At this stage of being in high school and at 17 years old, any talk of protecting the world and preserving peace was all just a joke. At this point, everyone had an ignorant view of the world and had their own understanding as to what the world could be like in the future. There were some who still possessed a pool of hot bloodiness but had also understood that not everything in this world could be accomplished just by relying on passion. And thus, protecting the world and preserving peace was just a joke for everyone. The things which everyone thought of doing upon becoming a metahuman were not that noble actually. These students could only witness the others awakening their powers and admire them in envy from afar. But Lu Xu, who had already awakened his extraordinary powers, was considering his plans for the future seriously. This is what I think. Since the web had already said that the era of the supernatural is returning, wouldn't everyone become a metahuman? And that it is only a matter of time? <laughs> that would be great. Lu Xu could not stand it anymore, since you said it is returning, was there a period in history where everyone was superhuman? I guess not, it would be impossible for everyone to awaken. From Li Yao's distress, plus 40. From From just this one statement, Lu Xu had unexpectedly gained a bunch of distress points. Honestly, Lu Xu did not plan to be such a wet blanket this time but had merely said what was on his mind. A scenario where everyone in the country becomes a metahuman was far too impossible. At the very most, there would only be a few more metahumans in this country. To be blamed for being honest, how was this reasonable? Lu Xu was too lazy to care and went back to continue with the test. After witnessing the strength type metahumans with his own eyes, there did not seem to be anything out of his expectations. On the other hand, Lu Xu was intrigued by the female student from next door and was curious about her powers. As for that immoral metahuman student who had violently beaten up his teacher, there would, unfortunately, be more of these people out there in the country. Be it robbery or any other severe crimes, as long as someone who had been bottling up the whole time was given an unimaginable amount of strength, there would most likely be some sort of problem in such a situation. Written in Mr. Lu Sun's book, In Memory of Lu Hushin, All Along, 
I would not use the most pessimistic perspective to judge the people of China. But little did I know that it would become as brutal as this. This statement was rather biased as Lu Xu felt that the people of China should be expanded to the rest of the world. It was not the case that there were villains only in China, but villains all over the world. In 1974, Marina Abramovic, labeled as the grandmother of performance arts, carried out her performance, placing herself under anesthesia, she sat down on a chair and allowed her audiences to use the 72 types of tools laid out to fiddle with her. The tools consisted of a kitchen knife, a bullet, a gun, and even a whip. In the initial hours of her performance, the audiences were hesitant. When they had realized that Marina would not react at all, they started to cut up her clothes, take pictures of her while she was naked, made cuts on her throat with the knife as they acted like vampires, and even fooled around with her private parts. After the performance, Marina stated, if you leave it up to the audience, they can kill you. Is human nature kind or evil inherently? This topic has been debated for the longest time. Lu Xu did not really care too much about all these and only wished to protect his own conscience. Now that he had thought about it, if those men in the black coats were acting under the government's instruction to suppress and control the current situation, this could be beneficial for the common folks. But Lu Xu did not like to be controlled and preferred to be of his own free will. He hated the feeling of being controlled, much like the flame burning within his chest, which seemed like one of humans' basic instinct. If there were villains, there would be heroes. However, Lu Xu chose to be neither of them. Half an hour had passed after the incident where Li Qi had brutally beaten up the teacher when the police arrived. Without taking into consideration what the school principal had to say, they took Li Qi away immediately. Lu Xu stood atop the building as he looked at this group of policemen's back view. He could not help but feel that they had unusually sturdy qualities and suddenly realized that perhaps it would suit them better if they were to wear those black coats instead. In the afternoon when the language exam had just ended, their form teacher abruptly notified everyone that this afternoon's exam would be postponed to a day later. And in place of that exam, there would instead be a physical examination for the entire school cohort and even those who had not started school, would have to come back in the afternoon to attend this checkup. This physical examination had popped up too suddenly and they even had to postpone the exam. Furthermore, they genuinely wanted the entire school cohort to participate in this. What exactly happened? Every student did not quite understand what was going on. Additionally, the most important thing is that this was the first time the school was hosting such a checkup and the students did not need to contribute anything. As for Lu Xu, not needing to contribute money for this was considered rather beneficial for him. Did the one who suggests this physical examination have any connections to the guys in those black coats? If the government was the first to receive the news beforehand, then when anything happens in the future, they would surely have countermeasures in place already. Or perhaps this incident with Li Qi had brought some of their plans forward? But what did this have to do with the physical examinations? In the past, Lu Xu used to have such checkups in Fuli Orphanage and they were just simple tests for their sight, hearing, blood pressure and electrocardiogram, nothing special at all. When the time came for this afternoon's checkup, only did Lu Xu realize that he had made a simple, common mistake. This afternoon's test had required them to draw blood. Damn it, the tests at Fuli Orphanage were far too simple and he had never drawn blood for a blood test before. As such, this resulted in Lu Xu being ignorant of the fact that drawing blood was a common routine for most physical examinations. God damn it, how poor was Fuli Orphanage exactly such that they could not even afford a blood test once? Since he had not experienced it before, Lu Xu was totally clueless as to what it was all about. As for drawing blood, Lu Xu felt rather conflicted since God knows what changes could have happened to his blood ever since he lighted up those three stars. The form teacher, Shi Qingyan, grouped everyone together and gathered them at the field. At that moment, Lu Xu glanced at the girl from the neighboring class and found out that she had a complicated look on her face. Only then did he feel a little comforted and poised. 
Lu Xu had thoughts of escaping from this checkup since he was healthy anyway and he knew his own body the best. After eating two refresher fruits and lighting up three of the stars within him, Lu Xu's physical condition was anything but poor and there was no need for any examination. In the end, he had realized that this examination was controlled very strictly. The person in charge had completely followed the name list as he proceeded with the checkup, calling them in one by one. This group of people wearing white were rather unusual as they mostly consisted of males. Who had ever seen a hospital which consisted of nurses who were all male? These people could not possibly be those guys in black coats, right? Lu Xu whispered to himself in his heart. If only he was not that well informed about what was happening, then he would not be overthinking it. But he was, and he could not help but imagine the worst. He told Shi Qingyan, the teacher, I need to go to the washroom, I'm rather urgent. If he could not hold it in, they would not possibly force him to go through the physical examination, right? At this moment, a nurse in charge of the examination behind Lu Xu said, Since you urgently need to go to the washroom, we'll draw your blood first. Come on, it won't even take a minute, Xiao Lu, draw his blood first. Lu Xu suddenly felt unwell at that moment. <laughs> What a smart Alec! Chapter 23 The blood draw took place in groups of ten and at the moment when Lu Xu wanted to claim that he would faint upon the sight of blood, one guy beside him actually fainted from the sight of blood, falling onto the ground. However, a scene which troubled Lu Xu happened. The group of nurses, surprisingly, did not care about the fainted child and continued to draw his blood while he was unconscious. Damn, how unlucky. Furthermore, during the process of watching the others getting their blood drawn, Lu Xu was able to feel a fluctuation of power from the nurse behind him. If anyone was to tell Lu Xu that this bunch of nurses were not those guys in the black coats, there was no way he would ever believe them. Who had ever seen blood drawing being so forceful and mandatory? And who had ever witnessed a metahuman being a supervisor for a physical examination? And all the other male nurses, were they soldiers? Lu Xu cannot be conflicted anymore, what if the other party catches on to his unusual behavior and suspected him? Just take my blood, Lu Xu had a tragic look on his face. He had tightly locked up the stars in his map within him and even stopped his daytime abilities before stretching out his arm. He then realized that even after he had gone through those steps, this group of nurses did not seem to change the way they looked at him at all. Could it be that they were really unable to sense anything? As he looked at his blood getting drawn from his arm, he thought, at least the dark, red blood did not look to be different from usual. Lu Xu felt that after drawing his blood, this group of people would probably make their next move. Lu Xu suddenly recognized that this group actually comprised so many metahumans. It seemed as though their preparation had been very extensive. Since the government was the first to know and first to act, fragmented individuals would be unable to resist them, no? Even then, they would have to go up against a coordinated and disciplined team of metahumans. From the look of things, it seemed like every development in the current situation was all part of their plan. But, will they be in control forever? The thought of such a magnificent world existing was breathtaking for Lu Xu as he looked forward to such a scene. If those A and B class and even C class metahumans had powers which could go against modern weapons, would they still be willing to be suppressed? Would they still accept orders from ordinary people? Everyone had some ambition in them. After this afternoon's blood draw, the school did not release the students early but instead required them to conduct self study in the classroom. Lu Xu was too bored so he took out his phone and started browsing through the forums. Currently, the forums seem to be rather interesting as all of them seem to be discussing the metahuman situation. One of the threads which with one of the highest views had caught the attention of Lu Xu. Its title was, This Afternoon, I found out that the three cities had surprisingly conducted a wide-scale blood test at the same time. In the thread, the poster's landlord was a senior in the school and his afternoon classes got suddenly cancelled and a physical examination was held instead. After that, he had found out from his classmates from his previous high school that it was the same for them as well. 
even in the other cities, this was the case. There was a group of people replying to this thread. I'm from Xingzhou, and the high schools here are conducting this physical examination too. Here from Ingchuan, the high schools here are doing it as well. All these thousands of replies were mostly explaining that they had a physical examination on their side as well, with the replies all from students. As for the schools which did not start as early and for those who were overseas and unable to make it back on time, their parents were notified by a phone call that the next time the physical examination would be in a week's time. If the students did not participate in the checkup according to their assigned schedule, it would adversely affect their testimonial files. This was surely too oppressing. Lu Xu felt rather agitated inside. What was destined to happen would definitely occur and the government's wide-scale checkup could have possibly drawn open the curtains of the future world. Sharing the desk with Lu Xu was an ordinary girl called Yi Lingling. Since she liked to gossip about others, her relationship with the rest was not very good. In the end, Lu Xu, who was ranked first in class and had a sour relationship with the rest, shared the same table with this girl who was ranked second in class. This girl would always look for Lu Xu to gossip about the class, but he had found it rather irritating. They were not even close and whatever gossip it was, Lu Xu was not interested at all. Yi Lingling peeked over at Lu Xu who was working on the test, Lu Xu, do you think that this metahuman situation is believable? If you were to awaken, what kind of abilities would you wish for? Lu Xu stopped writing, could the metahuman abilities be even chosen by oneself? He turned around and replied Yi Lingling with a serious tone, freedom, equality, the rule of law, richness and power, democracy, intelligence, harmony, patriotism, dedication, honesty, friendship. Yi Lingling was stunned. I ask you about the metahumans and if you did not believe in them then so be it. Why did you list out the core moral values of society? From Yi Lingling's distress, plus 76. Lu Xu was elated as the first day of school was literally a harvest to him. From the look of it, it seemed like his distress points could exceed 4,000 and after he reaching home tonight, he would definitely use it in this mischief system of his. In the end, Yi Lingling had a loose mouth indeed. While all of them were passionately debating over the metahumans, everyone in the class knew one thing. Lu Xu did not believe in the existence of metahumans. Everyone burst into laughter after hearing this. It was such an obvious fact, and it was as if he did not believe in it as he didn't have the chance to awaken his powers. The Golden Foundation and the incident regarding Class 7's Li Qi were the best examples of the case for metahumans. In everyone's mind, they immediately formed an impression of Lu Xu being stubborn and that he had given up all hope of becoming a metahuman. It's up to him to believe it or not. Anyway, it seems to me that he has no chance of becoming a metahuman at all. Just leave him to live in his own world. His studies are indeed great, but if everyone awakens to their powers, perhaps education would be rather obsolete in the future. All of them had silently acknowledged that Lu Xu was someone who would never awaken to his powers, and even if every person in the country were to become metahumans, he would most likely be the last to become one. Originally sidelined, Lu Xu was now thoroughly excluded from this social circle. Those who were part of this social circle were the type of people who felt that they could be a metahuman, and those who were outside of this circle were the people who they thought could not become a metahuman. Just because of this metahuman situation, a huge rift was formed in this class which had gotten along so well originally. It was as if, upon becoming a metahuman, you would be able to reach the skies. Lu Xu had heard all of their discussion but did not really care about it since he was getting along in life quite well. Right now, his priorities were to not get into an argument with them but rather, to attain the refresher fruits as soon as possible to increase his upper limits and then break out of class E. He did not let his classmates' verdict get to him, and from their enthusiasm about the metahumans, Lu Xu had noticed something, perhaps, this matter had already spiraled into an international situation. Pure, brute strength was, without a doubt, admired by others. But those naturally Class E metahumans were also admired by Lu Xu. What change would occur if Lu Xu was to light up all of the stars in the first nebula? 
He just had to wait and see. Chapter 24 It was already at night once school was over. The sun was setting over the horizon, and a speck of red could be seen floating right over the indigo hue of the horizon. The passing of the Lunar New Year also meant the approaching summer. Lu Xu preferred the fall because the weather was more favorable, cool and refreshing. He feared the winter the most when he was younger as he had a weak body. The thermal wear from the social service was not bad, but the blanket was thin and not insulating. He used to wake up with a cold nose and cold feet, and at that time he was very vulnerable to illnesses, so he especially hated the winter. After all, to appreciate the winter and admire the snow, those were activities for the wealthy who did not have to worry about food or warmth. Back in the past, Lu Xu would sneak out with Lu Xiaoyu to buy sweet potatoes in the street. They didn't have much money with them, only $2 and $5 notes, and most of their money came from volunteers from the social service. But one sweet potato wasn't expensive. Two dollars were enough to feed the two of them, and Lu Xu ate less so that Lu Xiaoyu could eat more. On the way home, Lu Xu bumped into an old man selling sweet potatoes. The stove seemed warm and on it were already a few cooked sweet potatoes. He greeted the boss and looked over at the cooked sweet potatoes. He wanted to pick one which was cooked well. Lu Xiaoyu loved eating sweet potatoes, and the best ones were those that were golden and oozing with juice. The boss, holding onto one sweet potato, said, $2.60, 2.50 will do. Lu Xu gladly paid for the sweet potato, deciding to give the little girl at home a treat tonight. Back at home, the two snowmen in the garden had already melted. But more importantly was seeing his ripening tomatoes which he planted, and it gave him some sort of happiness. He took out the key to open the door, Lu Xiaoyu. Do you smell it? No one responded and Lu Xu was curious. By logic, Lu Xiaoyu would dash out once she smelled the fragrance of the sweet potato. He went further into the house, Lu Xiaoyu? He opened Lu Xiaoyu's room door and found Lu Xiaoyu hiding in her blanket, face white as a sheet. Lu Xu panicked and touched Lu Xiaoyu's forehead. It was scalding hot. This little girl was running a fever. Lu Xiaoyu only just started coming to, is the sweet potato cooked well? Don't buy those that are not cooked well, not delicious. Lu Xu heaved a sigh of relief, still greedy for sweet potatoes, why did you get a fever suddenly? I washed the clothes you've been wearing for a week, and the water was rather cold, the little girl, not as lively as she used to be, said softly. Why wash clothes on such a cold day? Lu Xu complained and took out a thermometer from the cupboard, put it under your arm. Lu Xiaoyu obediently listened, and within five minutes, showed Lu Xu the thermometer. His eyebrows raised, 39 degrees. Just when he was preparing to go look for common medicines in the house, he realized he didn't need to use such commoner means to solve such a problem. Lu Xu had thought about this before, if he could help Lu Xiaoyu cultivate skills as well, will he let her? The answer was yes, definitely yes. Maybe through the cultivation of skills, one could be immortal and live a long life. If he had to see Lu Xiaoyu pass on in just tens of years, while he could live a long life, that didn't seem very favorable to him. He also always felt that if Lu Xiaoyu could train with him, it would be more meaningful as he would have a partner. Even though he didn't have many of methods of training and cultivation as of now, he could possibly teach Lu Xiaoyu in the future. Be it the Daoist training and cultivating skills in the video, or whatever, Lu Xu could attempt anyway. And now, Lu Xiaoyu could eat the refresher fruit. Although it wouldn't bestow her with significant skills or improvements, it could at least make her healthy. Healthy was what Lu Xu felt when he ate the refresher fruit. And now, since Lu Xu gained 4,109 distress points from what happened today, it was a huge amount to him and it was probably enough to get a refresher fruit for both Lu Xiaoyu and him. Lu Xu felt joyful spending all these points. Celestial fruits could wait a little, as he could train even without celestial fruits and they were replaceable. Refresher fruits, on the other hand, were irreplaceable. Lu Xu had no other methods of achieving what the fruit could provide. Got it.
Lu Xiaoyu looked at Lu Xu, who was by her side, uneasily, as if something was about to happen. Lu Xu, why is your face so black? Maybe I'm an African, Lu Xu replied indifferently. Lu Xu thought he might have encountered a system which was cheating him. The past ten lottery attempts all failed with, thanks for participating. Only on the eleventh attempt did a refresher fruit appear. The lottery's lowest prize is the refresher fruit? So in future when Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu didn't need it anymore, could it be sold outside? Strengthening limbs and joints, many people outside probably need it. Trading what he didn't need for money for his survival seemed like a good idea. He just wasn't clear about this lottery system. Could it provide him with different prizes such as new skills or training methods? He also didn't know if the refresher fruit and expiry date. Of course, the current Lu Xu didn't have the points or ability to experiment with refresher fruits. He passed a refresher fruit to Lu Xiaoyu, eat it, it's for you. Lu Xiaoyu looked at the refresher fruit and her eyes widened. This fruit looked so good, just looking at it felt delicious. She took the fruit and stuffed it in her mouth, and shouted in shock, Lu Xu what did you give me? Why did it disappear immediately after entering my mouth? Lu Xu didn't respond, but closely observed the change in Lu Xiaoyu. Once she ate it, she started sweating, and her complexion changed from pale to rosy and colorful once again, it was incredible. This could prove that the fruit he gotten through his points could be shared with others as well. It supported his point that it could be sold. Even if he didn't sell it to metahumans, he could sell it to those who were ill? He just didn't know how many illnesses this refresher fruit could cure. He measured her temperature again, she had restored her normal temperature. Lu Xiaoyu, as if she felt something, looked at Lu Xu with her wide gleaming eyes, Lu Xu, have you awakened? Although she didn't hear of any special ability involving producing fruits, such a mysterious fruit, it definitely had something to do with metahumans. Lu Xu thought for a moment, I don't know if I count as having awakened, but I'm definitely not weaker than an average human now. Do you want to be a metahuman too? Chapter 25 this question had to be asked, whether it was for Lu Xiaoyu's sake or for other reasons. Firstly, he had to respect Lu Xiaoyu's opinions. Lu Xiaoyu nodded, I do. Relax, I will think of a way, Lu Xu warmly smiled and replied, wake up and eat your sweet potato, just leaving a quarter for me will do. Lu Xu did not specify how he was going to find a way and Lu Xiaoyu did not dig deeper. Their rapport was not something which was built in a short time and since Lu Xu had claimed that he would think of a method for her, she strongly believed that he would practice what he preached. The current Lu Xiaoyu was the healthiest she had ever been. Without the refresher fruit, perhaps Lu Xiaoyu would have to suffer a week's worth of injection and medicine in order to recover a little from this fever, which would also cost a fortune. Lu Xiaoyu happily watched the television as she held onto the sweet potato. Lu Xu stared at the clothes airing on the veranda as he could hardly believe that this little girl had such desires as well. This girl was very mature compared to the kids who were the same age as her, if not she would not have helped Lu Xu in his egg-selling business. Although Lu Xiaoyu did not openly express it, Lu Xu knew clearly that since they relied on each other for survival, she had always wanted to do something for him and not to always rely on him to take care of her. A relationship where one party was always giving while the other was always receiving would not last for long. Both of them were impoverished orphans and they knew very well about how cruel and cold the world can be. Xiaoyu, if you were to become a metahuman, what would you want to do? Lu Xu curiously probed. I would probably earn some money. Then I would go out shopping and finally, I would find a place to stay, as Lu Xiaoyu replied after thinking for a long time. Lu Xu smiled as it was the same answer he had told the little kid this morning. This was maybe the reason why both of them wounded up together. Currently, he possessed about 3,000 distress points and it was probably time for him to continue his research on this system. Lu Xu initially planned to continue his consumption of the refresher fruit and after each one he ate, he would practice his celestial powers to see whether there was any change in his speed of activating it. Only the answers to these questions would set his mind straight, 
Was there a relationship between his aptitude for abilities and the refresher fruit? What role did his aptitude play in his ability to practice his powers and was aptitude really the basis of one's powers? Lu Xu understood that the world was unfair and after having eaten the two refresher fruits, his aptitude for abilities could possibly be what others had when they first started out. But since he knew about the existence of such unfairness, only then was he able to put in the extra effort to strive for whatever he could possibly get. While others were sleeping, he was out selling eggs. While others were up at night playing games, he was out working as a waiter at the barbecue stall till 2 a.m. in the morning. All these events were insignificant, what was important were the results. Lu Xu went for the lottery wheel again and having gained nothing from his previous 10 tries, he felt more prepared as to what could happen next. However, something he never expected happened. This lottery system actually rewarded him with three refresher fruits in a row with not even a single failure. At this point, Lu Xu's hands were shivering as he did not dare to continue with the lottery. This damned probability rate was something he had experienced before and he had already learned from it. He understood how difficult it was to be winning prizes consecutively from this lottery. It was similar to poker in the sense that at times where you had no choice but to believe in the odds of winning. Lu Xu was terrified that the mischief system would give him over 10 failures in a row afterward and that would be so frustrating. Slowly, slowly, Lu Xu finally came to a conclusion that he did not need to go through the risk again, since he already had these three refresher fruits in hand. Would it not be fine to use the remaining 2,700 distress points to redeem a celestial fruit? Why go through the trouble just to add on to his own suffering? Lu Xu retrieved one of the refresher fruits from his system and this red-colored fruit was coated with a layer of crystal-clear honey. Consuming it, the fruit actually had no taste but it was able to deliver a sense of comfort directly into one's body. This sensation was even more direct and intrinsic than its tastiness. The previous time Lu Xu had practiced his celestial powers, he had estimated that 15 days of training would bring about an effect similar to consuming a celestial fruit. Thus, by using this estimate as a reference, he would use this opportunity to measure the positive effects the refresher fruit had on his aptitude to practice his powers. After consuming the fruit, Lu Xu went back into the room to sing the lullaby softly. If Lu Xiaoyu hears him, would she not die from laughter? The moonlight felt like sprinkles and there was no snow nor wind outside. However, the starlight seemed like snowflakes as it swiftly descended from the skies. Lu Xu looked up and saw that the starlight had linked up with him in the darkness, with the scene resembling a huge spiraling galaxy. While Lu Xu directed the light into the third star, he was suddenly overjoyed to find out that the starlight's speed was much faster than it was previously. If he had needed 15 days of practice previously, it had decreased to only 9 days now. Of course. Of course. Lu Xu found it hard to suppress his excitement from deep within. If he was able to continuously increase the speed of practicing his ability, it would reach a point where it would not delay his practicing speed even if he had no more distress points. All along, the celestial fruit and his own practice would complement each other to increase the speed of his ability's progress. Perhaps, the time where he would complete the first nebula and become E-class was not too far away. While everyone believed that Lu Xu would never become a metahuman, and when his classmates could only discuss the matter and not actually awaken their powers, he had already unlocked a higher level. After eating another fruit, nine days had been reduced to six. As he looked up once again, Lu Xu could see that the spiraling galaxy had sped up together with the descending starlights which seemed like pouring rain now. After another one, the six days reduced even further to two. That spiraling galaxy had suddenly given off a bright burst of light, resembling an actual nebula. With every refresher fruit he ate, the spiraling galaxy formed even faster and the speed, at which his body accumulated that starlight had become even quicker as well. Up to this point, Lu Xu had undeniably confirmed what effects the refresher fruit had on his aptitude for abilities. Maybe it was something which could actually alter a person's foundation. From just two days of practice, he would be able to gain the effects of a celestial fruit. 
he had made it big. At this stage, the refresher fruit could possibly be what he needed the most. Lu Xu felt that he needed to slow down and even if he wanted to continue on with the lottery, he would have to wait until tomorrow. There was a moment of silence every time something significant occurs and Lu Xu felt that he should use this time to settle down from tonight's reward. It was not confirmed that something surprising would happen all the time during his training, and he needed to get into the mood in order for him to endure the dullness and loneliness of training. The strength type were considered to be F class, and in this class, everyone only had brute strength. However, if Lu Xu was to be able to break through to E class, would he possess extraordinary powers like the elemental type metahumans? Perhaps everyone who practiced their powers was the same since it was claimed that if one was to reach the higher classes of metahuman grading, he would be able to possess indomitable abilities. If so, what would his future powers be like? Lu Xu was filled with hope as he awaited the future. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty and we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens 